Well, Governor Malloy, welcome back to the Lisa Wexler Show. Uh, it's nice to be with you. It's very nice to have you. How's the weather up in Hartford today? Uh, actually, today's been a pretty good day. A little warmer than it's been the last few, and we had periods that the sun actually came out. You know, there, there would have been a shadow for the groundhog. I know. There's a little bit of melting here, too. We're keeping our fingers crossed, but it's supposed to be cold again tonight. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, okay, so let me just get right to it, because I appreciate that you're a busy man, and I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, there was a report by the Department of Labor last week, Governor Malloy, that said that in the last 20 years, there's been basically job stagnation in Connecticut, as well as population growth at a standstill. However, in that same period of time, the state budget went from $7 billion to $17 billion. I'm sure you saw the report. Yes. It, it was so stunning to me that I had to step back and say, oh, my God, how did this get there? A lot of the commentary is that it got there because of our income tax, which gave license to the legislature to spend wild. You have announced you're presenting your budget next week in front of the legislature that your budget is going to be a combination of spending cuts and tax hikes. Do you think maybe it would be wise, literally, and I know this sounds maybe outlandish, to cut our income tax so that we create a pro-business environment in Connecticut once again? I'm sure. I I don't think that that, that's a terrible idea, Um, but... Does that mean that we should also then eliminate Medicaid, uh, providing Medicaid coverage to people uh, to make sure that they have health care? Uh, does it mean that we should close every uh, nursing home in the state? Does it mean that we should close half the hospitals in the state? Does it mean we should let half of the population out of the prisons? I mean, what 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 are the trade-offs that get us to any one position? So, you know, I, I've laid out a pretty clear framework for this budget. We will not spend uh, $1 more on the operating uh, portion of the budget than we we spent in the current fiscal year. We will not borrow a billion dollars, which is what they did last year, to cover operating expenses. In fact, we won't borrow any money to cover operating expenses. We won't do an early retirement system that uh, uh, of any, any sort that would exasperate uh, the uh, uh, the deficit in the pension program. And I, like my predecessor, I'll actually fund the pension program. So we won't have artificial savings of three hundred and sixty million dollars, nor will we have our artificial dollars in the sense that we borrowed them to cover operating expenses. So I'm trying to get the state back to a reality. But if you're telling me that, that, that your reality would require that the state in one year cut its budget by $3.5 billion, I'm telling you that we wouldn't be the same state we are. No, I believe you, Governor Malloy. It's just astounding to me that, in other words, if a population of Connecticut had grown by 10, 20 percent over that time, then you can see an incremental growth in the state budget. But, 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 but you know, the problem is, where did it come from? Well, the problem is that with what that study didn't tell you is how much other states went up. And, and, and many states went up in, in very similar fashion because the biggest driver of those expenses, well, obviously, who you employ and what you pay them and their benefit package, that, that's a big driver. But the biggest driver has been Medicaid. It's, it's health care. It's not health care for the employees, although that's expensive. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's the Medicaid cost. We have had 22% on average inflation in health care costs over the last 15 years. Okay. What do you think that does to budgets? That, that drives them crazy. Great. Correct. Okay. So, I mean, I think you have to put, you know, uh, and, and let me, let me uh, you know, in all fairness, um, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of states have seen similar increases. So when you isolate it from from the 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 the, the, the the comparative information, um, it sounds terrible. Now, do I think it's great that Connecticut did that? No, I don't. Do I think Connecticut made some very bad deals? The answer is I do. I, I, and I think that there was no fiscal discipline. That's why I said we had to go to generally accepted accounting principles to do our accounting. That's why I laid out a budgetary framework before I even start laying out what the budget's going to look like, because I want people to know that the rules are changing, that we are going to get our spending under control, that we are going to establish what our means are, and that we are going to live within those means. Now, you had said very recently that we need to be prepared for sacrifice. Can you give us a hint of a suggestion of what's coming down the pike next week in terms of the tax increases? There there will be effectively a large, be a very large spending cut. And why do I say effectively? Because we're not going to borrow 
uh, to pay our bills, and we are going to fully fund our obligations. That money's got to come from somewhere. We're going to cut programs. We're going to consolidate many agencies. We're going to look for consolidation savings, particularly in year two of the budget, because remember, we budget two years in, uh, at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, suffice it to say that Connecticut's government um, a year from now is going to look very different than it does today. But what about the tax increases? What can we expect? Well, well, what what I've said is I can't I can't raise taxes three and a half billion dollars, and I can't cut uh, uh, expenditures by three and a half billion dollars, and in either case, be the state that we are today. So it's going to be a mixture of those two things. And you're going to get the budget in the net, you know in the not too distant future. We're finalizing those in meetings as we go along, uh, and we'll certainly uh, certainly talk about it. But but it's neither it, it's neither all of one or the other. It's a mixture. Uh, a lot of that will be around the issue of closing some loopholes that that exists, um, um, and, uh, and trying to be fair. Uh, also, uh, trying to build a system uh, that is encouraging of employment, which I don't think our system, particularly for our lowest uh, uh, earners in the state, has been encouraging of employment. And speaking of that, today was a big hearing, got a lot of press down here about the liquor stores uh, you know, being open on Sunday for the first time, and there seems to be some dispute because the smaller stores are saying that maybe it could hurt their business because they'd have to pay overtime, whereas the supermarkets wouldn't have to pay overtime. So there seems to be some dissension. What, how do you feel about that? What happened today in Hartford? Where do you see that going? Well, what I've said is this is an issue for the legislature um, uh, to debate. Uh, if they pass a bill that allows for Sunday sales, I will sign it. Uh, if they don't, um, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not telling them that they need to do it. I'm, I've sim- simply said that if they pass a law uh, that does away with one of the very few blue laws left on our books... Mm-hmm. Um, I will sign it. Okay, we're going to. But I'm not. I didn't. I didn't go to the hearing. I'm not spending time, my time uh, or effort, in trying to get it passed. I'm simply saying, if you pass it, expect it to go into law. If you don't pass it, obviously it doesn't go into law. Got it. Okay, let's just go to one phone call. Someone, George from Stanford, has been holding for quite a while. George, you're on the line with Governor Malloy. Keep it quick. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I'm just calling regarding the uh, tolls. There's been a lot of talk on tolls um, coming to the state of Connecticut, making a return. How viable do you think um, this is, and, um, you know, will it ever be done? I think uh, I, I, a couple. There's two quick answers to that. Number one, uh, if you're talking about tolling to build a new road, um, uh, I think it's a good way to, to, to do that. So we are talking about Route 11, a road that has been uncompleted for 30 years, um, and there's no money in the budget to do it. So I, I would actively consider uh, tolling that road for the purpose of raising the money to complete the road. If you're talking about 95, 91, 84, Merritt Parkway, Wilbur Cross, first and foremost, understand that the regulatory process process uh, would take you probably four to five years. So don't expect anything in my budget about tolls. Uh, we, have, we have time to consider that, uh, to figure out whether that's the, the proper way to raise money uh, for transportation. But I will tell you this, that I would never sign a toll bill bill uh, unless that money was truly isolated, uh, that we amended our Constitution to say that if we are collecting money by tolls, it can only go into transportation, because tolls are a terrible way to raise money for, for general government. Well, I'm so okay. I'm so glad that you feel that way, aren't you, George? Yes, uh, yes. Because you know what tolls do? Also, they slow me down on the way to where I'm going, Governor Malloy, and I well, hate to be slow I, I hear at the speed you're driving, that may not be the way. Yeah, not <laughs> <laughs> now. Now let's not get let's not get into our you all know right. speeding histories here. All right, all well, right. Governor Malloy, thank you very much for being on the Lisa Wexler Show. I hope you're going to come back regularly. We look forward to seeing what's in your budget. More than happy to be with you. Thank you so much, Thanks. Governor Bye-bye. Malloy, on the Lisa Wexler Show.